Val's new Chipotle Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Loaded with carne asada steak, chipotle seasoned rice, spicy Southwest Chipotle sauce, and three melted cheeses. All wrapped up and grilled to go. For the perfect balance of flavor and spice, think outside the bun. Use caution when wearing Tag Body Spray in the vicinity of a multi-hottie pet pyramid, because cheerleaders can be aggressive. B.E. Aggressive. Introducing Tag Body Spray for guys. Oh. Consider yourself warned. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Saturn. And Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. First 10 points scored by Akron. Last 10 Northern Illinois. All tied at 10. Middle of the third quarter. Our Aflac trivia question tonight. It's a pretty good one, actually. Which school holds the Division 1A record for consecutive seasons with a 1,000 yard rush? I'll give you a hint. The school we're watching, Northern Illinois, has had a lot of running success going back to LaShawn Johnson uh, about a decade ago and Michael Laverne Turner, who's now in San Diego, uh, backing up LaDainian Tomlinson. Well, second straight. Nobody's backing up with any no, Thomas. No. So. And now Garrett Wolf, who had 1,310 yards in eight games, 129 thus far here tonight. Three and out of their first drive of the third quarter. Two Wolf to the 23, a gain of four. With Yamari Dixon, the sophomore out of Miami, coming up with the tackle. He's a backup free safety. Way through the third, Northern Illinois seven and four, six and two, champions of the Mid American Conference Western Division. Mike, look how shallow the safeties are from Akron here. Ten people in the picture within that first down marker, and movement's going to back them up five more. Full start, number 80 of the offense, penalized five yards, remains second down. Tight end Pat Raleigh is flagged there. We should point out that. There are two automatic bowl bids for the Mid-American Conference. The other one is to the GMAC Bowl down in Mobile. The Tom Amstutz in Toledo, who we saw in the title game here last year. They're going to be uh, the team getting that berth. That's been announced. So the winner here goes to the Motor City Bowl here in Detroit. The loser will go home. See, right now Nicholson is seeing what we're seeing. You got nine guys up the line. They're going to still run it. And Wolf finds room to run. Garen Wolf finds another gear. Garen Wolf pulling away from people. Runs it all the way to the 20. That is just great execution. Kirk showed you how tight it was. No room to run. Wolf gains 63 and gets close to 200 yards. Well, Mike, usually when you see nine men in the box, offense is checked to a quick game or the pass. But this time, they get great blocked right there by number 62, Doug Free, the left tackle. And as we've been saying, Garrett Wolf just needs a seam into the hole and out of the hole, and then gone Ooh. right by the safeties and the speed to get out in the open field and make a defense pay. If you have one guy miss that tackle, he's gone. He looks like he's breathing real hard. <laughs> Here he comes again, stumbling through the hole that time still. Retains his balance to gain seven to the 13. Well, a big play like that does wonders for your offensive line, and for your entire play calling, and just the, the offense in general. But you can see when you're a safety, it's Yamari Dixon, and you get out of position in your angle to come up to make a tackle. That's all it takes for Garrett Wolf. And he goes over 200 yards. Yep, yeah, that last run, he's now set the championship game record as you saw. He comes out. Adrian Davis comes in. David cuts it back to the left side. Good job to just kind of bring him back by Brian White. Out of Mansfield, Ohio. Get Garrett Wolf back in. Third down. <laughs> Fun to watch, isn't it? I just love the fact that I mean, it's one thing he's got great speed, great acceleration, into the hole, out of the hole. He's 25 carries. And this guy, he's a war daddy. 5'7, 177 pounds. And he just wants the ball. Just keep feeding it to him. 
More than half their plays. Here he goes on third and short. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Garrett Wolf. NIU takes the lead. Mike, all we heard from the Northern Illinois coaches is about the tight end, Jake Nordeen, who missed the first time Northern Illinois played. Right here, boom! What a great block to open it up for Garrett Wolf. You talk about Jake Nordeen making a block on the number one tackler for Akron, Jay Roar. Took him completely out of the picture and opened it up for Garrett Wolf for the touchdown. Nendig adds the extra point. Garrett Wolf, we have a penalty marker down back at the kicker. They roughed the kicker. That'll be tacked on. And Northern will be able to kick off from midfield. 11 yards on the score. Wolf had 84 yards on the drive. It's the third time this year, second consecutive week, he's gone over 200 yards. Northern Illinois has scored the last 17. Redesigned 2006 Saturn View. Get a new 2006 View starting at $17,990, 1.9% APR, and receive a $500 Target gift card. Singular customers, Tech City to 243. Throughout the ages, man has been on a quest for greatness, seeking to glorify himself and make himself larger than life. Sunday, December 4th, 2005, we will find out who's really big and who's just plain bad. BH1 Big and 05 Awards, followed by the finale of But Can They Sing? It's celebrities at their best and celebrities at their worst. Tune in Sunday for the star studded event of the year. With the BH1 Big and 05 Awards at 8 and But Can They Sing at 10 on BH1. Stop viruses. Stop spyware. Stop paying extra. Because Comcast High Speed Internet Service includes McAfee pop up blocker, antivirus, and parental controls free. Comcast and McAfee, all you need to protect your privacy and your family. Call 1 888 Comcast today. Sprint, yes, you can. It's everything that we've worked for since day one, uh, since I originally came to NIU. It's the thing that everyone's talked about. We've never had the opportunity to get here, and we do, and we're on the doorstep of greatness in the Mid-American Conference, and I think we owe it to ourselves to give 100% effort and try to come on with that title. The MAC championship means to me life. It is uh, what Sam Hurd has put everything into here over the last four years in Northern Illinois. Fell behind 10 nothing early. Hurd has been held off the receiving column, but he's done a nice job blocking downfield. Leader on this team, and obviously the story. Garrett Wolf over 200 yards for the seventh time in his career. As he's at 213, including the touchdown to make it 17 to 10. What's amazing is you look at look at these numbers. You look what happened the first time they met this year. The difference is, you know, Jake Nordine is a tight end, and I think the offensive line they're opening up holes. But I think there's a little bit of a chip on the shoulder of Garrett Wolf just to prove that that was a fluke the last time they matched matched up when he only had 52 yards rushing. After the penalty kick from midfield is a touchback, and here's Reese back in the studio. All right, Mike, all season long, we've given you the singular All-American Player of the Week. Now you can vote for the singular All-American Player of the Year. Reggie Bush is certainly a nominee. So, too, is Vince Young, the fine quarterback from Texas. Reigning Heisman Trophy winner Matt Leinart makes our list. So, too, Brady Quinn from Notre Dame. All you have to do to access the nominees, text the word VOTE to 87654 on your singular wireless phone and make a vote. You might win yourself the trip to the national championship game. Garrett Wolf has another quarter. I may add him to the list. <laughs> 1,500 yards in nine games. He gets a break. Fourth consecutive drive start from the 20. Pass is incomplete as it was dropped. A good throw by Getze, not hung on to 
by Johnny Long. Oh, the game that's tied, you need a big play and you need a big drive. This is into a nine-man front. Nicholson actually checked to that. Got a big block by Doug Free, the tackle. And then the next two plays later, actually, he gets a block by Nordeen. And we need to continue to say that this is a great running back, but it's an also a physical offensive line with a mentality that loves to dominate a defensive front. Gets he play action. This one is caught by Jason Montgomery, who fumbled the football, and Northern Illinois has it. He had first down yardage, but one of the twins, Adriel Hansbro, knocked it free. Keenan Blaylark recovered the game's first turnover. They went back to the little bit of misdirection, getting the ball back to Montgomery. It's a great call. And He's got the first down. He's just got to put the ball. You always hear people say, get the ball into the other, other arm when you have a defender coming in on you. Otherwise, the ball is right in a position for that helmet to knock the ball loose. Adriel and Alva Hansborough, identical twins. The teammates don't even know. They just call them twin. Wolf. Time he stopped in the hole after a gain of three. Breon Stokes. There they are, identical. One is two pounds heavier than the other. I think it's a, even in film, the way they cover is almost exactly the same. Same 40 times. So the guys just kind of hate twin. See, what I found amazing is same personality. That usually you could tell identical twins. If you can't tell by a birthmark, if you can't tell by a a look in their eye you can always tell by their actions and by their personality and they said they don't have they, they have the same personalities wolf couldn't pull away there chris brown with the tackle aaron hey mike i think we're talking about a little garrett wolf here how about the fact when joe novak told us yesterday he was a little hesitant about this guy becoming the number one guy in the ground game because he thought he was a little too small he didn't know if he could carry the load he thought maybe he could carry it 10 to 12 times well what did you say how many carries for how many yards tonight Joe Novak knows the real deal. Yeah, there are the numbers, Aaron. 29. It, as Kirk was saying before, fits Novak's personality. Just both Shen Beckler raised in football. Run it. Grind it out. Get tough yards like Wolf did there for a first down out of the 21-yard line. You know, speaking of Bo, that's uh, Joe Novak's old coach in Miami of Ohio. My, this Northern Illinois team opened the year 40 miles from here in Ann Arbor playing Michigan. And, Joe Novak asked Bo Schembeck when to talk to the team before that game. And Bo was a little uncomfortable about talking to a Michigan opponent about playing against Michigan. Joe said, just kind of towards the end, after a little while, Bo got a little bit of the fire going in the speech. He, Bo can't sit in front of a football team without getting his blood going a little bit. Wolf out, Adrian Davis in. Stopped at 21, no gain. Breon Stokes and this accurate defense need to make plays with the three-minute mark, third quarter of the championship game. Well, it seems like every time Garrett Wolf goes out, the Akron defensive line gets penetration, is able to get to Adrian Davis and to slow him down. As good a back as Garrett Wolf is, they've got to be able to slip through. And the big thing with Garrett Wolf is you've got to slow him down and not allow him to accelerate through the hole. Yamari Dixon missed a couple of tackles on the last series. He's back in as Chris Brown tried to play, but was hurt. Here is Wolf. That time Dixon got in the hole and made the play. He was really the aggressor there, making the stop at the 20. Third down coming up. Kiki Gonzalez is the one who's uh, saying, bring it on. Now, keep an eye on Garrett Wolf. We talk about durability, how pressed we are by his ability at 5'7. 175 pounds he's over 30 carries on the night for the first time you're starting to see him put his hand up to his lineman saying fellas i gotta, I gotta get a little bit of help here he has 62 percent of the offense tonight 31 carries of their 49 plays have been by wolf play action to him this time and nicholson throws to the end zone Hurd touchdown for sam Hurd. In front of Devonzo Tate, the 13th touchdown of the year for Hurd. 
who had one of the nation's best receiving yardage games earlier this year and the turnover by Montgomery cost Akron seven points 24 10 Northern Illinois has scored the last 24 in this one. So you probably think that Garrett Wolf's got a little bit of a prima donna personality, undersized, probably unwilling to pick up the pass, the blitz. Watch off the left edge. Mackey comes. He's right there to pick up the block. And then you have the quarterback throwing the ball, putting it up to a tall receiver, 6'4", where he can make the catch. Garrett Wolf, nice job. The offensive line does a nice job against the blitz. And Sam Hurd made a move to the left, to the right, back to the outside. DB grabbed his jersey. Every, I guess yeah. you're allowed to do that here in a Mac. That's the third time. That's why there are no flags in the game. He grabbed jersey all night here. <laughs> Hurd out of San Antonio, first team all-conference performer. He's a senior and he's only 20 years old. Wolf getting the uh, towel to cool off. He's been so busy, but uh, here's Hurd against Central Michigan this year. He had 266 yards, the second best receiving game in the country. And then against Miami, he had 223 yards. So uh, this Northern Illinois offense has proven, whether it's Hurd or it's Wolf, that they have put yards and points on almost everyone this year. And for the fifth consecutive time, an Akron drive will start from their own 20-yard line. Here's the answer to the Aflac trivia question. Wolf's over 1,000. Northern Illinois has done that a bunch. Do you know, you know the answer here, sir? To the I guessed a couple <laughs> I guessed a couple teams, but I, I we couldn't come up with it this couldn't morning. Couldn't this morning? thought maybe in Nebraska, you know, maybe in Oklahoma. North Carolina. I would have never guessed that. Really? I'm going to be quite honest. Okay, good. good. You can go do what you were going to do. Yeah, i got to ask Marty something. Go right ahead. I'll, I'll finish. Okay. North Carolina, 12 straight seasons. The significance is <laughs> Texas is in the mix this year. However, they're going to probably fall short. Minnesota and Northern Illinois have had a nice consecutive run of 1,000-yard runners. First down throw by Getze. Complete his best receiver, Hickson. They needed to get a play. And Hickson gets it for 15 yards. Amos Lawrence, one of the big runners in that North Carolina stretch there. And here is the consecutive 1,000-yard crew. You see uh, Vince Young have to have a monster day against Colorado to keep the Texas deal going. Minnesota and Northern Illinois achieved a 1,000-yard runner this year. And thus, they've done it for seven consecutive years. The Colin Bryant, one of those backs? Uh, it may have been Colin Bryant at the front end. I got the encyclopedia here. I can check. Brett Biggs taken out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Where's that ESPN encyclopedia? That you travel with that, right? Yeah, I, yeah actually, my, uh, my uh, carry-on. Right? Right? Yeah. There it is. Down here, boys. Come on. What's going on in the booth? My gosh. Mac championship game. The booth is unprepared. Let's go. Here it is. ESPN Encyclopedia, Herbie. You got the, you got this. You got the rule book. We've got it all covered. I'll, I'll check for you. Uh, yeah, Kelvin Bryant, probably. Kelvin Bryant. Yeah, I think he had to be involved there a little bit. The Tar Heels. Does North Carolina come before or after North Carolina State? Before. Before? Yeah. That's good. Good academics. Second and four. Here is Getze. First look denied. There's nothing open downfield, so he makes a good decision by running. I know he's going to come up a yard shy. There was nothing going on downfield. Of course, you go back to the 1940s and Charlie Choo Choo Justice. Oh, sure. He's the top runner. He's a great one for North Carolina. But uh, in that in that stretch that you were talking about, uh, Natron Means oh, in the early 90s. Oh, yeah. Nice. Ethan Horton, Kelvin Bryan, Amy Clark before that. They sneak it and keep it, trying to quick count Northern Illinois and get the first down. And they're going to have to unpile a measure. Looks like he might be a hair short. All depends on the ball spot here on third down. My guy, I didn't close. I'm a big, big fan of Luke Getze and his effort. You know, he's a gamer. This is not how you run a quarterback sneak. I mean, he, he almost just took a knee. I mean, <laughs> ro rolling the shoulder and backing in? Yeah. You got to go forward, right? They've got a yard and a half to get, and he's looking like he's just leaning on his line, backing into him the way I did last week in the backyard brawl, and I was leaning on you a little bit. Watch the measurement here for a second. And then you can teach everybody how to run the quarterback sneak. Well, it. that's not how you do it. But you run behind Orlando Pace. You run behind Corey Stringer. Corey Stringer, 300, 
60 pound legendary lineman. No, but seriously, he, he kind of turned his shoulder there and backed well, into just, it. That doesn't do anything. He took the snap and he just kind of went down and, right. and turned his back. You've got to take a step and go. You've got to get up field. Forward you don't just back. fall down. Especially with the offensive line that's getting beaten here in the second half by Northern Illinois. He just kind of went like that. It's not like being aggressive. Is that part of drill, seriously? Is the yeah. quarterbacks of how to run the little sneak on fourth and yeah. one? Or yeah. third and one? Yeah, I mean, it, this is a team that struggled tonight in third and one. Third and two situations. Now here they are in fourth and about six inches. So will they run See another sneak? better this time. They're going to hand off with Brett Biggs. He oh. fights to get the yardage. His forward progress, he has the first down. And the line judge, Steve Barnes, is all over that. A lot of work, but they got it. First down here in the final half minute of the third quarter. I think J.D. Brookhart saw the same thing that we saw. It wasn't real comfortable. Fourth and a few inches, usually you're going to see the sneak. You don't want to have to hand it way back, especially on a play that's to the outside. You're giving that Northern Illinois defense time to get to the ball carrier. And Pitt Biggs, very fortunate to get inside of Tim McCarthy to pick up that first down. Nice move. Now do they take a shot down the field? like watching a different defensive line here and what they've been able to do and they're playing with so much confidence attacking the line of scrimmage you can hear them laughing and a little hooting and hollering from all the way up here only 51 yards on 20 plays for Akron in that third quarter from a championship, Northern Illinois. College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10.30 on ESPN. Some beers are big on flavor. Some beers are easy to drink. But until now, no beer has offered it at all. Budweiser Select starts with hand-picked American and Bavarian hops. Budweiser Select is brewed longer. Old taste that finishes clean. With Budweiser Select, it all comes together. Expect everything. Apparently, somebody was up late last night. Make that somebody. And that. Lotion Q10 restores your skin, keeping it healthy and fit. Well, that takes care of your face, but don't forget about your eyes. Cream Q10. Nivea for men. More evolved skincare. Hungry. Hungry. Q10 restore. Fit. 
Well, that takes care of your face. But don't forget about your eyes. Reduce puffiness and lose the dark. Q10. Restores your skin, get healthy and fit. Well, that takes care of your face. But don't forget about your eyes. Restores your skin and getting it healthy and fit. Well, that takes care of your face. But don't forget about your eyes. Reduce puffiness and lose the dark. Circles with revitalizing eye cream Q10. Restore your skin, getting it healthy and fit. Well, that takes care of your face. But don't forget about your eyes. Reduce happiness and lose the and shrimp.
premium denim jeans. Regular, real, comfortable jeans. I'm just like you. I work hard every day. Many ordinary patches. First, it's icy to dull the pain, then hot to relax it away. The icy hot back patch. Count on it. Protect this house. You beat big guys every year. You know they can't touch you. They know they can't touch you. How does the team stay motivated? If you don't get motivated when you put on the armor, then you ain't got a pulse, man. Fourth down, the ball sits at the Under Armour 10-yard line. Goliath down to its last shot. We must protect this house! There is the Husky from Northern Illinois as we begin the fourth quarter here at Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Oh, yeah. 24 to 10. Northern Illinois over Akron. Mike Tirico, Aaron Andrews, Kirk Herbstreet. Northern looking for its second MAC title, back-to-back -back bowls. They went to the Silicon Valley Bowl last year and defeated Troy State. Second and 13 to start the fourth quarter for Akron, which is reeling on offense. Brett Biggs. That looked like one of his first quarter runs. He comes across midfield. Brett Biggs uh, went to junior college out of Fort Scott, Kansas. Really out of Bartow, Florida before that. Then went to junior college. And still, he was hearing the similar things to Garrett Wolf. Too small. Nobody's really interested in you. Well, one assistant coach, a former Akron assistant coach, said to J.D. Brookhart, you got to give this guy a look. And Biggs has turned out to be a very consistent runner, over 1,000 yards this year. You can see the start that he got off to and until that run has been stopped. Third down, gets he throws first down to the tight end, Kasparic, carrying would-be tacklers to the 30, gain of 18 yards on the play. And behind the play, Northern Illinois defensive lineman is shaken up. Mike, I love the look at Kasparic. I mean, he is yeah. a good-looking tight end. He sits right in the middle of those linebackers, just sits right in that void. Getsy puts the ball there on third down for that big first down for Akron. Martin Wilson is the uh, player shaken up for Northern Illinois. Looking at his leg, Wilson actually had missed some time because of a heart problem. And injured his leg here and get a look at uh, the pass rush. As he was coming in, just got his foot caught there as he was engaged with Mike Donaldson, the left guard. It's always good to see, obviously. And, uh, you know, this, Mike, on third down, we've seen so much attention being put by Getzey, the quarterback, to the outside and trying to get the ball to Dominique Hickson, number 23, or Jason Montgomery. It's the first time since early in the first half that they finally dialed up the tight end. And Kasparic, as I said, 6'6", 270 pounds. But looks like he may have to soft his hands on this offense. Well, I like his little bit of uh, energy, a little burst after the catch. Yeah. I've seen that from a couple of times. There's Zippy in the room. Mascot for uh, Akron. We'll All get right, to so that in a minute if nothing happens going, on this play. Zip. From the 30 on first down. Against the four-man rush. Getsy. Be careful, put it up for grabs. A lot of banging. And it's an incomplete pass. Adriel Hansborough back with the coverage. Dominic Hickson. You want to know about Zippy? Sure, of course. Yeah. 51 years ago, the nickname was the Zips. They were originally the Zippers, short to the Zips in 1950. Well, 51 years ago, they were looking for the student council try to figure out a mascot. Zippy the kangaroo officially declared the mascot May 1, 1953. The person who suggested it got the idea from a comic strip that he thinks was called Kiki the Fighting Kangaroo, which was popular at the time. Well, that takes care of that. Yeah. Thank you for that. 
I think that's in the encyclopedia as well. Second and 15 coming up after the motion. Skemi and Kasparic, the tight end, both not in sync. Full start. Offense, right side of the line, penalized five yards. Previous spot remains second down. And because of Zippy the Roo, Kirk, Fear the Roo is the uh, yeah, mantra for the athletic teams at Akron. This is what you guys do it in Ohio, Fear the Roo. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, oh, Fear the Buckeye in Michigan. L listen, Zippy. Um, Four last five. Huh? <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, listen here, Zippy. The uh, soccer team, Ken Lola's the head coach. They're in the final eight against Maryland this weekend nationally. Big season. There he is. Big tight end, Kasper. Takes it down to the two. First and goal. Is that your guy? That's my guy. Apparently so. First and goal for Akron. It's a nice throw by Getze. Gets a press coverage on the outside. I think Akron's on to something right now, trying to take advantage of the size of this big tight end. Linebacker lets him go. That's a no-no because that's going to give the big a big target to the quarterback. Getze looking up. Kasparic splits the safeties and almost gets it all the way into the end zone. After the gain of 32, first and goal, Akron picked up a fourth down in this drive. They need a score. They go to Brett Biggs, stay in the game. Touchdown, Zippy the Roo and Akron. <laughs> uh, Luke Getzey and the offensive staff found something on this drive, and it's the tight end, Chris Kasparic, who does a nice job coming up with two big catches, get the ball deep into Northern Illinois territory, and then Brett Biggs takes it in for the score. That was a huge drive for Akron, considering they hadn't really they hadn't done anything with the ball here in the second half. Five drives starting from the 20. That was huge because they went for the fourth down and picked it up. Come down a field, 80 yards in 11 plays. Kasparic having his best game of the season here. As he's maxed out now, and Garrett Wolf will get a chance to run it for Northern Illinois. But Kasparic, four catches, 61 yards. It sets up the touchdown run for Biggs. And yes, you can fear Zippy LaRue. Akron within seven in the championship game. This is our marathon station. We own it, we run it, and you know, we're proud to be part of this community. My name's on the door, so everything's gotta be right. I mean, these people know me, and I wanna take care of them. When you're an independent dealer, your reputation's on the line every day. But it's not just about running a business for us. It's about being a part of a community that we care about. We know what our customers want because we know our customers. Helping friends and neighbors, that's the spirit of America. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. It's not your clothes. It's not your music. It's not your favorite color. It's not your neighborhood. It's your watch. It's your watch. It's your watch that tells most about who you are. Men's Kinetic Perpetual. Ladies Diamond. Men's Chronograph. The Couture Collection from Seiko. For a Seiko authorized dealer, log on to SeikoRetailers.com. It needs to be a little tighter. Zippy wants a championship. S. Claus. <laughs> we already got him one. Elves. Need a great gift for the holidays? A Home Depot gift card is perfect. It comes in bright new holiday designs, and it's always the right size. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. This holiday, Office Depot has gifts that offer outstanding performance to handle digital media. Get a configure to order HP Pavilion A1110Y with Intel Pentium 4 processor with HT technology and printer starting at $499.99 after mail-in rebates. Plus a free 15-inch LCD monitor upgrade. Order before December 11th for guaranteed delivery by December 24th. Exclusively at Office Depot. So if you're just joining us, Akron scored the first 10. Northern Illinois, the next 24. Akron has responded here with a touchdown. Kasparic, two big catches, a fourth down conversion. 
the three yard touchdown run by Biggs making it a seven point game a minute seven into the fourth quarter of the Marathon Mac championship game ninth year this has been played. And then Dan Nicholson a Chicago White Sox fan trying to complete the dream season for a kid who grew up on the south side. Lead Northern Illinois to a title. It's going to lead Garrett Wolf and the offense back on the field. That's, there you go. That's the whole offense right there. That picture. Nick will see everybody else. And the little guy. He's right he does all the line. Right? <laughs> all the work. This is a good directional kick, returnable by Shatone Powers. Trouble. Nice job by Akron. Directional kick starts it and well covered as well. Jay Rohr made the tackle second time. Well, we're talking about Kirk's uh, awards, the Off the Beaten Path, or Path Awards here tonight. Uh, as you look at the update, Akron 322 yards, Northern doing most of its work on the ground. Coming up, Kirk's going to show us the coordinators of the year. Right there, Gene Chizik at first year. Yes, actually, he used to be at Auburn last year, first year at Texas, doing a wonderful job. And Al Borg just got so much credit at Auburn last year with Jason Campbell, Ronnie Brown, and Cadillac Williams. I think he's done a better job this year with Brandon Cox and Kenny Irons and Auburn having one of the better offenses in the country. Just flipped to Chizik, the defensive coordinator for Texas, Borges, the offensive coordinator for Auburn. The rush there by Wolf is stopped by Kiki Gonzalez for a gain of a yard. The, the numbers are right. Oh, they the, flipped the, up. They flipped, flipped, just flipped yeah, back Gene, around. Gene Chizik in Texas is a defensive coordinator. Right. Everybody gets so caught up in Vince Young because of he's such a great player. But their defense with Gene Chizik in his first year taking over for Greg Robinson with the Syracuse to become the head coach. He has done a marvelous job. And Al Borges, nobody's talking about Al Borges this year, and he's done a better job this year. Second and nine. Here's Nicholson throws to his tight end, Nordin. It's the tight end who probably had the most publicity coming into this game. Second team all conference. And he picks up a first down after Kevin Grant, the redshirt freshman, made the tackle. Well, when you have a running back that's gone for about 227 yards, play action, bootlegs open up like this. And Nordin, as Mike just said, 6'3", 262 pounds, did not play the first time against Akron, has been blocking and setting the edge all night, but now you can see he can also catch the football and get upfield. Back to Garrett Wolf, 220 plus yards of the night. Adding to it here, Wolf probes his way through the secondary for a gain of 23, take up to 250 yards here tonight. Mike, this is great illustration if you're a safety and how important it is to take the proper angle. You, you're going to have Dixon, Yamari Dixon. He's got a job to fill the gap. He comes inside too much, and that's all it takes to give Garrett Wolf enough room to bounce the ball to the outside and gets upfield for a big carry. Just a poor angle like that, and boom, he's down the field. Wolf tries to use the speed and a flag for a 15-yard face mask coming here on Dixon, violently pulling Wolf down. He wasn't intentionally trying to do it, but it was the impetus to bring him down. Again, as we said on the last drive, a lot of Dixon here because of Chris Brown being out for Akron, and that has really burned them on some of these long runs by Wolf in the second half. J.D. Brookhart feels his defender grabbed around the neck and around the shoulder pads and didn't actually get the face mask, and he's got a pretty good argument. Face mask, number eight of the defense, penalized 15 it, it yards. It looked to me, even before we saw the replay, that, he, that it happened so fast, and the, the body language yes. by Wolf sold it like it was a face mask, but it, I honestly think that, that Dixon came around the shoulder pads. He didn't even touch the face mask. So Akron gets the bad call there, which is exactly what they don't need, down seven, trying to slow down Garrett Wolf. No, it's interesting, that flag came from the near side where they couldn't see if he was they hanging onto the mask, which usually is the first uh, reference point for calling a face mask. Make sure you see, don't react to the bottom. Game to three for Davis, here's Aaron. Illinois, their goal at the beginning of 
this season was to come here to Ford Field to play in the MAC championship. Since that was their goal, their head coach, Joe Novak, made up these t-shirts for his team to wear. As you can see, December 1st, what is today, Ford Field. And on the other side, of course, it's got the field. The guys wear it under their travel suit, but here's the thing. This is Garrett Wolf's t-shirt. He hasn't worn it at all. He says he will put it on if they win tonight. Huh. Nice of him to lend it to you. Second down, he is stopped there for a loss of three yards. Good job by John Mackey, the strong safety, getting up to make the play. And that's interesting. Wolf's the one guy who would not wear his shirt all year. It's worked out for him up to this point so far. A great discipline this time by Akron on the backside by Mackey and Henry. The two safeties. Watch, you'll see Mackey come down and make the play. But I think Henry, number eight, learned his lesson. He's going to stay to the outside just in case the ball's going to bounce to the outside. Mackey and Henry stay at home, and you have to when you defend a guy like Garrett Wolf. Big play. Third and 11. Pressure comes off the edge. Wolf gives Nicholson time. He threw an interception that was dropped. Oh, my goodness. Kevin Grant out of Herndon, Virginia, had a pick in his hands. Fourth down coming up. It'll be a 52-yard field goal from here. Well, Mike, I don't think the young freshman Dan Nicholson even saw Kevin Grant. He underestimated his closing speed there and actually put the ball right into the hands. That's an interception. If Grant doesn't make the interception, you got another guy sitting back there in Devonzo Tate waiting for the ball. So that is a poor decision and poor throw by Dan Nicholson. Mendick going to try it from 52 yards. Is it long enough? Yes, Mendick from 52, a career best. Well, the one thing that happens in this building on a regular basis is good kicking. Jason Hansen has been, he's been the MVP for the Lions for about 10 years now. Always a good kicker. A new MAC title record, 52-yarder with room to spare wow. from the sophomore Chris Nendick. 27-17, four minutes in, fourth quarter. Before you go here. Before you attempt this. And before you even think about going there, you need to go here. Cooper Discoverer Tires, built to take you just about anywhere. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Go to coopertire.com for more information and a dealer near you. enigmatic smile of all time lies the world of a mysterious genius da vinci decoded sunday night at nine eight central as only the history channel can bring you you gotta stop playing these exams the way you play football teamwork is cheating code breakers an espn original movie set high-speed internet, Comcast knows broadband better than anyone. So Comcast Workplace gives your business speeds up to 7 megs and state-of-the-art security features. All for company you can count on, day in and day out. When Comcast comes to work, everything simply works. Start feeling great right now. At Advanced Massage Centers, receive a 30-minute massage for only $15. Let our professional therapists ease your stress away. Yes, a 30-minute massage for only $15. At Advanced Massage Centers, operators are standing by. Call right now for your appointment and start feeling great. Now. I'm making a list. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. And Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Garrett Wolf has 248 yards tonight. Uh, face mask call that was a wrong call. 
allows them to get 15 yards closer and uh, Northern Illinois connects on a school record tying 52 yard field goal by Chris Nednick. Watch his reaction. Get out of my way. <laughs> oh, shove. Get out of my way. I'm a tough kicker now. Yeah, he's tough. That's just not, in my opinion, this is another example of why kickers are head cases. Guy gets inside a dome, gets all wound up because there's no conditions, there's no wind, there's no snow, there's no rain. They all just settle down on kickoffs and on field goals, and they they hit the ball out of the stadium. You could say, well, it's because of the, the conditions. I think it's their minds. Hickson brings it out. Good tackle out at the 23-yard line by Adriel Hansborough. You're not going to speak at the Luke Rosa Awards anytime soon, by the way. No. Sports Center 30 and 30. Here's Reese. Yeah, but he's the first guy out there carrying the kicker off the field when they make it. Ben Roethlisberger, a season of injury. He's got a right thumb problem. That, of course, is passing thumb, but says he'll try to give it a go despite the pain against the Bengals on Sunday. One game separating those two Steelers down in the AFC North. ESPN.com's Jason Stark reporting that the Manny Ramirez for Bobby Abreu trade, highly unlikely that deal first reported or the potential for that deal by the New York Post. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done with football. ESPN News always on. Give love to the kickers, Herbie. Come on. <laughs> Reese, Reese, you know, I love kickers. I just think they're head cases. First That's and all. 10 from the 24 here is Getze throwing it to Biggs. Nice move. Got helped by a block downfield. Gets out to the 40 yard line. They are good receiver blockers, both sides, Akron and Northern Illinois, a gain of 50. It has been a very competitive, very entertaining marathon MAC championship game. It's, it's win or go home here. If you win, you come back here at the end of the month. Akron's never been to a bowl game since they moved up to 1A almost two decades ago. JD Burkhardt's trying to get that. Northern Illinois trying to return to the top of the MAC. Joe Novak was around this place, Northern Illinois, when they were in the MAC and got there before. They built such a good program. Garrett Wolf has had a fabulous night. Biggs with the carry, gains just a couple to the 42. Admittedly, the Mid-American Conference is not on the same platform that it was over the last couple of seasons when Roethlisberger was in the league, or Byron Leftwich, or Chad Pennington. Charlie Fry. Charlie Fry at Akron is now with the Browns. By the way, there's a website to try to get Charlie Fry to play quicker. People want them to sign up, and they'll send the petition to the Browns. Amazing. Fry's replacement gets he had a back out, back in, throws it underneath to Biggs. Who will pick up the first down and go out of bounds at the 46-yard line? Gain of 12. Well, Mike, Luke Getze, that's how he hurt this Northern Illinois defense when they met the first time earlier this year. It wasn't that he scrambled for big yards. It's that he scrambled to buy time. This is exactly what he does here. Defense does a good job of taking away all of his receivers, and finally he just dumps it off underneath to Brett, to Brett Biggs. And when you give Biggs the ball in, in space, he's going to pick up the first down. But that's where getsy has been hurting Northern Illinois. When they only rush four, he's got all kinds of time to maneuver back there. Getsy 20 of 35, passing tonight. The helmet comes off. Uh, Miss carry by Dennis Kennedy. Four gain of a yard. Quince Holman lost his lid. He's going to need to come out. You know, you see him. Remind you that they have an ABC triple header. Coming up on Saturday, Texas, Colorado, Dr. Pepper Big 12 title game, UCLA, USC, and the Dr. Pepper ACC title game, Florida State, Virginia Tech. All starting at 1 Eastern on Championship Saturday. No huddle, second and nine. Gets he throws. It's complete. Jabari Arthur, first down at the 30 yard line. Gets he picking apart the Northern Illinois zone. Mike, Northern Illinois right now is sitting back and just preventing the big play. They're keeping their safeties back. And what I think is a nice job here of coaching is they clear out the zone. They flood the zone deep to the middle and deep to the outside, clearing out the safeties, and then dump it right underneath to Arthur for the big play. Here goes Dennis Kennedy. Pulled back at the 26-yard line. Need a touchdown run. And Aaron, what about the big play receiver, Dominic Hickson? Yeah, you had mentioned earlier you thought maybe he was suffering from maybe a groin injury or something. You wanted me to check that out. There's talk maybe it could be dehydration. There's also talk he could be a little ill. So we're trying to find out right now. He's working with the trainers, as you can see. Thanks, Aaron. Good job. Uh, Hickson came out earlier after uh, his fifth reception. Came and caught another first down. You can see 
He's not feeling too great on the sideline. Second and six, they screen with Kennedy. Makes a man miss. Kennedy has blockers. He's at the 10. First and goal for Akron at the six. So Biggs out of the lineup as he was winded. What a job by Kennedy, the redshirt freshman out of Lauderdale. He gained 21. And Montgomery threw a nice block for him. Mike, the blitz here on the screen. It's just a matter of whether or not he gets the ball off. And you see the safety. When Ray Smith missed that tackle, he had a convoy. I'm really surprised that Kennedy just slow down and let that convoy of blockers get into those red shirts. He probably would have walked into the end zone. He didn't show enough patience there, but still a big game for Akron. Younger back, just 50 touches in his college career coming into tonight. Certainly learning. Gets his throw for 300 yards. Now can he throw for a big touchdown? Should throw this one away. And he does. Out of the end zone is the tight end, Kasper, caught it. Nothing was open there, just get rid of it. Still half the fourth quarter remaining. Mike, now that you get down inside the 10-yard line, you're obviously going to try to throw the football. You're thinking, you, you know, you're thinking where's their go-to guy, Dominique Kixon? The fact they threw on first and 10, I'd be surprised to see him run here, but Kasparic, the big tight end, just checked out of the game. And that, to me, is the, car, the target, the primary target, and who you want to try to get the football to down inside his 10-yard line. Marcus Patterson has come in the game at a wide receiver spot. He's seen very little action this year. Gets he? He has time. Fires to the end zone, incomplete. Trying to run across the back was Johnny Long, the third receiver. The two twins ran into each other, and uh, Alva and Adriel Hansborough. Well, they do everything the same. They get shaken up at the same time here. As a receiver, you've got to have a little bit more urgency to your route down in this area. You've got to get open. You've got to work to get open. And you can see there, 81, Jason Montgomery just kind of lines, gets to the goal line and turns around. And now that's something that is not going to work out. Johnny Long finally working across the field. Third down now. I'd be surprised if Kasparic, the big tight end, does not check into the game here. In fact, he's already on the field. Mm -hmm. So the two twins collide there. And Alva shaking up. Gets up. I'm going to guess it's not the first time those two guys run into each other. Ident <laughs> identical twins. Yep. <laughs> Somebody next to me might know about identical twins running into each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, Marcus Patterson hasn't done anything all year, but because of the injury to Hicks, and number one is the slot receiver inside of the three at the top of your screen. All they've done is throw so far here. Gets he quarterback draw. Can he get in? He's at the five. He's getting there. Touchdown. Three receivers, so a lot of red shirts to the top of the screen. Getsy comes down to the near side, gets a nice blocking, and an extra point away from a field goal game. That is breaking a tendency by J.D. Brookhart, the head coach, and Jim Pry, the offensive coordinator. Shotgun a formation they've only shown two times tonight. And who, the last thing you're going to think about is Luke Getsy's going to keep the ball out of the shotgun and run intentionally for the touchdown. He had Brett Biggs out in front with the lead block, and he gets in to the end zone, right to the corner. Jason Swiger adds the extra point. Off the mat comes Akron. Great championship game. That's, That's what game. it's all about. I'm telling you, this could be the closest championship game of the weekend, huh? 27-24, and the desperation's a little bit different here. You've got a win to keep your season going halfway through the fourth. It's in the game. You know, you have to act like you've been in a championship game before. Look at Zippy the Roo here being passed along and whoa, look out! <laughs> <laughs> the girl in the hat back there. Great oh, reaction. Gosh. Very concerned. Zippy uh, does get up. And there he goes. <laughs> Just like the team. Back up and going. Oh my gosh. 27 24. This is probably the most hype Zippy's had 
You think in his career? His career. Yeah. I think it's the most fun you've had doing a game. Ten plays, 76 yards. <laughs> Gets he with the quarterback draw for the touchdown. His first rushing touchdown on the season. Tone Powers kickoff return. Spins away from one hit. Is brought down at the 29-yard line. Deontay Henry, special teams tackle there. Steve Levy, John Anderson getting set to settle into the HD studio for Sports Center. Coming up, Lone Star Battle, Mavericks and Spurs in a good one in the NBA. Bob Huggins, not heard from since uh, he was sent out at Cincinnati. You'll hear from him exclusively. And the Broncos' best weapon as we look ahead to the Chiefs and Broncos, one of the big games of a huge divisional NFL weekend. That's coming up on Sports Center. We have a good NBA game from this area tomorrow night. Larry Brown's return to Detroit. Garrett Wolf, first down carry, gains nine yards, maybe ten. We'll see where they mark him close to the first down. For people that are just uh, having a chance to tune into this, we got a obviously a competitive game, but if you haven't seen Garrett Wolf all season or seen him tonight, look at this. 36 carries, 257 yards. I think he's on his way over 300 yards tonight. It's been that kind of game, averaging seven yards a carry. What I want you to continue to appreciate, the guy's got 35 carries. He's 5'7", 175 pounds. Usually it's an Eddie George type of back. It's 225, 230 pound back. This guy's 175 pounds. He only played eight games this year and averaged 25 carries a game. So this is uh, a little bit more than his normal workload. Down the middle, the other tight end, Pat Raleigh, hung on at the 40-yard line. Chris Brown, who has been in and out of the lineup with injury throughout, is back down and shaken up. He's had an ice bag on the back of his neck that usually indicates a stinger of some sort. And he comes back in here and makes the hit on the 22-yard gain and can't handle it. Mike, when you run the football, I want you to watch the linebackers at the play action. Boom, right there. Look at the linebackers coming up into the line of scrimmage. They're at the line of scrimmage. Look at the hole behind them for the quarterback, Nicholson, to put it right in place of. That's why, I, you know, with all the talk about spread offenses, I love to see an offense that has the ability to run the football and also throw. Nice balance. You fake the play action. The linebackers get out of position, and you go right behind them with a nice throw that time by Dan Nicholson. Yeah, it, it's so funny because it's a guarantee when you talk to almost every coordinator, offensive and defensive, as you see Chris Brown just really struggle with that pain, that injury, they almost all talk about stopping the run and establishing the run and you see the reason why with exactly that play and what northern illinois has been able to do all game and all season if you're an offense and you can run the football we have a back averaging seven yards a carry and i'm on defense i've got to continue to come up with different schemes and different adjustments to try to stop you and subconsciously as a safety and a linebacker i start to cheat i start to cheat and I start to cheat up further and further, and a good quarterback and a good offensive coordinator recognize that, and that's why they keep you on your heels, because they go right behind you. And here comes Wolf again, up the middle, only gains a couple of yards. We've only been a decade of playing these conference championship games in the larger leagues, the Mid-American Conference joining the SEC, the Big 12, Conference USA now adding on, the ACC as well. But the performance by Wolf tonight most rushing yards in a conference championship game. Darren Sproles had the previous mark. He ran for 235 in K-State went over Oklahoma. That shocker back in 2003. I'm amazed he's still standing. Coming up close on closing in on 40 carries. Here comes number 38. Got out of one tackle. He's nearly getting still seven yards a pop and took a shot that time. Remember, Aaron told you earlier that his shoulder just don't, pops in and out. Just don't in a while. pop it back in right now. Then you, you're not good for that now. Look I mean, at the cuts. Four, 38 carries. He's still going strong. But Aaron told us how there are times during the game that he'll get hit, and he said it's not always the big hit. It's sometimes the way I fall on it. And he'll go back into the huddle and pop his shoulder back in and maybe go out for a play. Joe you know, Novak said half the time, I don't even know he does it. Exactly. You know what that replay just reminded me, looking at his feet and his short legs dancing? 
not in this building, but the team that plays in this building. Yeah, it does. Barry Sanders. That, that look of the legs. I'll never forget a Sunday night game up at the old Silverdome in Pontiac. That's now driving, by the way. That you saw Barry Sanders' legs running in one of those 240, 250 yard games. The small backs have that knack of being able to hide and make that move and make guys miss. And they hop. They just hop with such great acceleration. And they don't take the direct hits right off. Well, that's the big thing with Garrett Wolf. There's just a hop. And it continues not only to hop, but move forward. Another hop. Yes, and getting upfield. It is. It is very, very nice to see a back. And I think smaller backs run with more passion because they've been told their whole life they can't do it they can't make it and they run with they run with an attitude i like to say they run angry the way they run yeah warren dunn the guy in that uh, vein as well third and inches another quarterback draw nicholson didn't get a lot of uh, a bubble to follow there but the mark looks like he is the first down with five and a half left. I know Reggie went over, Reggie Bush went over 500 yards all purpose. Yes. How many yards rush? He had the two, 294? Yes, 294 so. yards rushing? That's the number one game. Did you know that graphic was coming up, by the way? No. I think a uh, nice foreshadow there by you, helping the truck. Quick to the trigger there. Yeah. The truck is on top of things here in the MAC championship. 267. Mike, he's going to take Reggie Bush down tonight. No, he's not. Hey, well, oh, it takes 30 more one yards, uh, 30 more yards. Well, that would get him to 297. There you go. That would take Reggie Bush down. What if they held to a field goal here? Well, he's still got a shot to get the ball back. A chance to. First and 10 from the 30. Here goes Wolf. Kirk was so hoping that he took it all 30 <laughs> yards in that play. If you know anything about Herbie, he's like, come on. Go, baby. Hit a seam. Oh, but this, oh. speaking of which. I'm so excited to get on a flight or a plane and fly out to see Reggie Bush and the boys in person. Number five, this is my performance of the year, individual performance of the year. I think it has to be everybody's yeah. individual performance of the year. 513 all-purpose. Ah, that play right there, that <laughs> that's, little, the that's a video game. He's the, he, he, is is a the, video game. he is the video game. Yeah. Xbox, what is it, Xbox 360? Yes. It's made for Reggie Bush because he's done so many things, he's got to stay up with it. Garrett Wolf putting on a very similar type performance here tonight. Really doing a lot of this on his own. Kevin Grant makes the tackle there. And Akron knows how huge it would be to hold him to a field goal attempt. Here's Aaron again. Garrett Wolf has been called the Midwestern version of Reggie Bush, and I asked him what it's like to even be mentioned in the same sentence as Reggie Bush, and he said, even though Reggie is a college player, I honestly look at him like he's in the NFL. It's unbelievable <laughs> to be mentioned in the same sentence. He's like, I try to watch as much video as I can on Reggie, try to see what he's doing, what I can take from that guy. That is a great compliment coming from a a you have a college back that's having a great year. He looks up to Reggie Bush like he's in a different stratosphere. Uh, let's get him get, get that chin strap buckle. Third and nine. He's in to pass protect. Nicholson's throw is incomplete. From here, it's a 47-yard field goal attempt. So Akron's defense does the job. Now, they're going to have one drive in all likelihood for a field goal to tie the game or a touchdown to take the lead if Joe Novak's kicker can get it done again. Great job by the Akron defense. They've been giving up some big plays. Garrett Wolf has been tearing them apart here in the second half. They've given up some plays through the air, and they forced a field goal here for Northern Illinois. Mendick from 46. On line again, and good. So what a game for Chris Mendick. Good from 21, 52. And 46 there after having a 49-yarder blocked earlier in the game. Northern Illinois by six. Here are the Bowl Championship Series standings brought to you by Allstate, USC, and Texas with wins in their back-to-back -back games on ABC. We'll set up the championship in the Rose Bowl. Penn State done. LSU and Virginia Tech in championship games this weekend as well. And a reminder of the ABC Championship Saturday lineup. Dr. Pepper Big 12 gets it going. Texas, Colorado, that's in Houston. UCLA, USC, out in Southern California. And then the Dr. Pepper ACC inaugural title game in Jacksonville. 
Florida State. Essentially, we'll have a mostly home field, but Virginia Tech's fans travel well. They'll be there to be represented as well. The lineup on ABC, and all those games are available, by the way, in high definition as well. College game day heading out to uh, just set up right outside the Coliseum for USC and UCLA. Look forward to seeing that. But look forward, I look forward to watching all the, the championship games. Do you like the championship games? I do. You know, I, a couple of my colleagues, at least one of them, sits uh, stage right to your far left as a viewer. Pencil holder? Yeah, no, further. Oh, Although, deep. Yeah. CF. Yeah, Chris Fowler. Fowler. Okay. He, he just can't stand the conference championships. I, I really like them. I, it's just, you know, depending on which conference you're talking about, we'll see how the ACC does with theirs this year with Florida State, who's lost three in a row. Hickson back to return this kickoff. Shaken up earlier. Has a good window to return here. Look at him keep going. This guy has been out of the lineup, banged up, not feeling good. Returned it out to the 32. There's a helmet out there on the field. Again, this is not UCLA-USC. This is not the ACC title game. This game means everything to these kids, and they're playing like it. It's fun to watch. John Anderson, Steve Levy, Sports Center coming up to the final of that Mavs Spurs game and all the highlights. Bob Huggins, his version of how the departure from Cincinnati went. And start peeking ahead to all those good conference division games this weekend in the NFL, including Broncos Chiefs. Hickson comes over to the bench and goes right down. You can see he's just in so much pain as he is under the weather. Here goes Akron, 318. The blitz is on, gets he gets it away. Biggs across the 40 to midfield. Pushed out of bounds, first down, gain of 17. Jabari Arthur, big block. And here comes the corner blitz, Mike. One of the twins coming in to the inside to try to put pressure on the quarterback. And I don't think Getze even sees it. He's lucky to get this off, but watch the blocking downfield. Great blocks by the tight end. This time, oh. you see 12 Jabari Arthur setting up even more space for Biggs to get upfield. That's the first time they corner blitzed all night. They almost got there. First down, Luke Getze over 300 yards and getting time in this fourth quarter to throw. To the 44, gain of six for Johnny Long. Again, they're down wide receivers, so a lot of guys have to slide over a roll and make key catches in key spots. Mike, keep an eye. The bottom half of the screen, Kasparik, the tight end. He's been finding some holes in the middle of that defense. There he is. There's the throw. Good call, Herbie. First down, Kasparik to the 33-yard line. Gain of 11. Here in the second half, Kasparik's been a big part of getting this offense going. And Luke Getze, who's got a hot hand, doing a nice job of distributing the football. But when he really seems to need a big play, first thing he looks for is right in the middle. And I love the way Kasparik just he kind of has his head on a swivel, trying to find the linebackers and finding a hole. Gets it. Four receivers downfield. Eludes the rush. In trouble. Trying to make a play happen. He throws it. It is dropped by Biggs. What a play. But Getsy is not the fastest. Deceptive. He's the best guy, but he's got a great feel for keeping keep plays alive, too, Kurt. I, I continue to go back to that first game. That's where he hurt Northern, Northern Illinois the most. He threw for 406 yards in that game. And a lot of it was because of this, avoiding the pressure, buying the time. And I'll tell you, if we lined him up and ran a 40-yard dash, I don't think he's, he's a blazer. I don't think he has great feet. But he's strong enough to get away from the pressure and pull away from it. And then he gets to the outside and buys time. That guy, Quince Holman, 96 in Northern Illinois, on his first team all-conference. He's just wiped out. He's got to catch his breath. So a backup defensive tackle in there as Getze sets. Throws off the hands and intercepted. Dennis Kennedy didn't grab it. The backup running back. And the pass is picked off by Phil Brown. Brown, the freshman out of Chicago, comes up with the interception. Mike, it's a great call, actually, by Akron because Kasparik's been hurting him. They clear him out on the field, right down the middle of the field, taking the safety with him. Nice big hole right where the safety was. The ball's thrown a little bit high. But reality, Dennis Kennedy, you'd love to see him be able to make that catch. I realize the ball is high, but if Kennedy's able to hold on to that football, what a big game, but a great call 
by Akron right there. That would have been a nice game for him. 2 10, three timeouts left. Here is Wolf. He is stopped. No gain. Akron will take the first of its three timeouts and put all the eggs in this bucket right here just to, to try to force the three and out and get the ball back. With a minute or so left. I honestly think he's upset because he realizes <laughs> that was a good play. That would, that, the, they executed it perfectly. Just the ball was thrown a little high. Rick Chris is the uh, commissioner of the Mid American Conference. It's the second year they've come here to uh, downtown Detroit. They wanted to take the championship game off campus sites and come to a bigger setting, an NFL type setting. And because of the geography, tough for Northern Illinois and Akron to get. A lot of their fans to this long ride here to Detroit on a week's notice. But uh, that has not in any way taken from this game. This has been as entertaining a game as we've been a part of all year. It's because, Mike, you said it's a championship on the line. We talked about in the open whether it's a, you know, whether you're in Pop Warner or you're in grade school, or you're in middle school or high school or college, when you have a chance to go out and one game decides who's going to be recognized as a champion. It's a lot, there's a lot of, uh, there's a buzz in the air that you just can't describe and an excitement level. And my man, Mike Black, showing the ring. It's for a ring. Players okay. walk around with a ring when you win this. And we're spoiled because we're around a lot of teams on a regular basis that win championships. These schools don't do it. It's huge for them. Second and 11. They've got to keep stopping Wolf. Wolf running. Gets to the 24. Another timeout by Akron with a minute and 58 remaining. Here in regulation, they have to stop them on third down, take a timeout, and try to force a putt. Well, our Wrangler five-star player in the game, no surprise, is Garrett Wolf. 270 rushing yards, uh, within 30 of the best rushing performance this season by a college football player. He's actually, he hasn't even equaled his last game. I don't know what we're making a big deal out of. He ran for 277, so he hasn't, he hasn't gotten anything yet. From a credibility standpoint, people that might be looking at him say, well, you know, people that don't understand and appreciate the Mac. This is this is good football, but when they went outside of the Mac, he played Michigan in the big house. He had, 104, he had 148 yards rushing against Michigan's defense. Next week, they played Northwestern, another Big Ten defense. Not the greatest defense is in the Big Ten, Northwestern. 245 yards against Northwestern. And as a team, they went over 1,000 yards in those two games, 411 against Michigan, nearly 600 yards against Northwestern. So it's not as if he's just, oh, he's a nice little back. I mean, yeah, look, look at those numbers. This is, this is an offense that uh, if you play them in the future as a non-conference opponent, you're going to get a well-coached team and a team that's going to come at you with some talent. Michael Turner, we mentioned, is at San Diego, LaShawn Johnson. They've had good running backs over the years. Now here comes a big play, third and eight. It's a must stop for Akron or the game will go for They only have one timeout left. It's going to be a throw by Nicholson. It's caught, but it's shy of the first down with Hurd inbounds. Akron takes the timeout. Minute 50 left. They're going to kick the ball to Akron. They'll probably get it back with about a buck 35 left. A little bit of a surprising call there by... Joe Novak and his staff. I mean, you have an inside receiver that Akron didn't even cover the inside, man. The ball was, it took so long floating in the air and allowed the defense to close in on Sam Hurd to bring him down short of the first down. Freshman corner, Brandon Anderson burnt a couple of times here today. Really made a good play there. All right, before the punch, let me tell you, Louisiana Tech, Fresno State, Paul Pinniger, a new dad uh, within, what, the last three and a half weeks. His team has to win that game to share the conference title with Nevada and Boise State. That's college football primetime presented by Nikon. Then we have college football conference USA title game presented by Xbox 360. Tulsa, and they came from out of nowhere to win their half against Central Florida and George O'Leary's turnaround story. Then in primetime on college football presented by Polaroid, number 16 Louisville, Brian Brom out for the year and the bowl game, the Gator Bowl where Louisville's going with his knee injury taking on Connecticut. The Huskies have to win to get to a bowl game. How about UConn's big win last week at home the way their defense played against South Florida shutting them out. Randy Edsel's a good coach. His team played yep. in this Motor City Bowl in this building last year. And the winner here will play in the Motor City Bowl. So because of Hickson being banged up, 
Brett Biggs goes back to get the punt from Dick Benner. And a good kick, too. Fair catch called for 51 yard money punt by the freshman from Bloomington, Illinois, Andy Dick Benner. So it comes down to this. Eckert has never been to a bowl game in Division 1A. They have to go 81 yards in 101 seconds with no timeouts. Ready, break. <laughs> and without the top pass pick. What do you want to bet that Brett Biggs doesn't come out of the game, the running back? Not to say that Dennis Kennedy isn't going to be a great back, the redshirt freshman, but you got to keep Brett Biggs on the field. You got to feel for Dominic Hickson, too, senior. This could be his final game because of illness and injury. He cannot be on the field. Luke Getsu. He's loading up. He's going deep downfield. It's high up in the air, and it is incomplete. Adriel Hansbro came all the way over to help on coverage. Phil Brown, the linebacker, was way downfield. He had the pick on the last series. Well, Phil Brown actually lined up on the line of scrimmage against Montgomery. That ball floated so high in the air. I'm guessing it must have slipped out of the hand of Getze because Hansbro almost could have come over and called a fair catch on that ball. Minute 33 remaining. I'd still look for the big tight end, Kasper. Okay? You need first downs. You don't need to get it all in one throw. He is lined up on the line, top of your screen. Northern showing pressure, play clock running down. Didn't get it off. So much going on, just trying to make sure you're in the right play. Cost him. Delay game. Number 16 of the offense. Penalized five yards. Remains second down. Like, I think Northern Illinois, with Dominic Hickson down, appreciates the ability of Kasparic and what he has done. They actually have a linebacker, and they've walked their safety, Ray Smith, up, up right against the tight end to try to take him out. Getsy running out of time. He throws. It's open. Montgomery trying to get the first down and get out of bounds. He may have done both. Headlines that marks him right at the marker. Going to be a first down at the 29-yard line. Camper caught a break there on the spot. And he'll take it. And at 26 left. Northern Illinois showing three down linemen covering with eight. Can Getsy find some place in his own? He throws it complete. Johnny Long to the 35. No timeouts. Minute 15 left. Watch Luke Getsy. It's, you work on this all the time. He's got to be in total command and total control without the timeouts. Get your players set up. Get them in the formation. Every second counts for Akron. Heading to the final minute. Another three-man rush. Getsy's going to run for the first down. It's a stop the clock at the 41 to set the chains. Great recognition that time. He just dropped, aborted his drop and got upfield to pick up the first down. Gives him time to get everything situated now with the clock stops. Wolf was yelling at Quince Holman, get off the field. He injured his shoulder. Now Northern Illinois has confusion. They do have 11 players on the field. Clock starts as the chains are set. Final minute. Getsy, complete. First down is picked up by Montgomery, rather by uh, uh, Arthur. So the clock will stop with 43 to go again at 12. Like we have to say, I've been talking a lot about Kasparic, but Jamari Arthur and Jason Montgomery and Johnny Long have done a nice job of picking up the slack once Hickson has been out of this game in the second half. Coming up with some key catches. Must score to go to a bowl game. Keep their season alive. Getsy throws. Here's Kasparic, the tight end, trying to get the first down. He's shy of it. Clock will continue to run. May want to down it here. Spike. Yep. Till the clock is close enough, you can afford to lose the down. He's going to pick up the first. That's a better quarterback sneak than earlier in the game. 19, 18 seconds left. They'll move the chains. Now, would you like to stop it here? Well, I, it. the clock is stopped. He could easily, he could easily get things set up. He looks like he is going to spike it. Well, the clock stopped, you had time to get a play call. 
But with 17 seconds, the downs really are insignificant. It's more about the time now. And Northern Illinois is going to take a timeout, make sure that they have their act together. Joe Novak trying to get to a bowl game back-to-back -back years. Win the conference title hasn't happened in a couple of decades. Remember, because of that receiver injury to Hickson, the best receiver, every receiver moves over a slot. Like as we get down to 17 seconds, I'm just looking out in the field, and you know who just cannot contain himself? Dominique Hickson ran out onto the field before Northern Illinois called the timeout. And you got to wonder if he isn't lobbying, saying, this is my last go-round. This is my last game. And I want to get in there, and I want to try to help. At the very least, maybe be a decoy, but just let me get on the field. Let's see if he ends up getting out there and trying to help his team out. Hickson, who's been bothered by illness and injury here in the second half. He's the top pass catcher on this team. 67's a school record in a year. Uh, he was born in Germany. His dad was in the Army training troops to go overseas. He lived in France and Spain and Greece, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas. So he's got that toughness instilled in him. There he is at the top of the screen. Akron out of timeouts. Second and ten. Hickson running deep. Gets he pumps. He throws for Hickson. It is caught for a touchdown. Are you kidding me? He can barely get off the field. Somebody go Kirk Gibson. Oh my gosh. Give me about a half hour from here. This is a massive extra point for Jason Swiger, 26 years old. He was a roofer, had two DWIs, lost his driver's license, finally got his life back together and said, I'm going to kick. I did in high school. Now he kicks the extra point for the lead, and it's good. Out of Columbus Whitehall, what an effort. What courage to come into the game and give his team a chance to win this game. Lined up at the top of the screen right here. What I want you to understand is this guy knows exactly what he wants to do, and he's going to try as best as he can to look the safety off Ray Smith. Look at his head. He's looking left, trying to get Ray Smith to bite on the inside receiver, which is exactly what he did. But I promise you that Luke Getze was throwing this football to Dominique Hickson no matter what. But as a veteran quarterback, Getsy does a nice job of looking off the defender, looking at Poindexter to the inside, and then throwing it over the top for the touchdown. Joe Novak, who's seen Northern Illinois come from such depths to such heights. Luke Getsy, what a game he's had. He's over 400 yards, 413 yards on 30 of 50. And Hickson, Aaron was down there. She had a, a first-hand view. He was uh, basically, Aaron, uh, completely out of it. Could barely get off the ground after that kickoff return, right? Yeah, what I found out is he was suffering from cramps, which is what we thought. He looks pretty dehydrated. As you can see, I'm watching him right now. He can really barely stand up. His teammates went over to him right away, grabbed him, hugged him, waving to the fans. We're going to grab him after this game and talk to him. Went right through the player's hands, which helped Akron because it started the clock a few seconds early. And now we're down to four seconds left. North Illinois at the 26-yard line. People associate Jason Taylor and, of course, Charlie Fry with this university. But forevermore, Dominique Hickson and his effort and decision to come out onto the field for that last play will be remembered forever for Akron football fans. Remember, he was a starting safety his first two years at over 111 tackles. Now, Northern Illinois. Garrett Wolf's had an amazing day, 270 yards. One play, they've got to do it all. They've got to make something improbable happen. And now it's going to happen from five yards farther back.
false start. Offense penalized five yards. Remains first down. Akron had three touchdown drives in the fourth quarter. 80, 76, and 81 yards with no timeouts. And their defense did a great job stopping Wolf getting a three and out there at the end. All right, so here is the season. Final play in the conference this year. It is Nicholson throwing it as far as he can. Eight Akron players there. It's deflected, incomplete. And for the first time in Division 1A, Akron is going to a bowl game. They are the champions of the Mid-American Conference for the first time in school history. Aaron is with the star, Dominic Hickson. First of all, Dominic, how are you feeling? We saw you down there on the sideline. You could barely stand up. Hey, it is God. God just blessed me, man. He gave me one play, and that's all I asked for, man. He just blessed me. Thank God. Take us through that last play for the touchdown. Coach asked me if I can get on top of him, and uh, I told him, yeah. I said, just give me one shot. And Luke, he put faith in me. told me that he was going to throw me the ball, and he just gave me a chance. How bad were you lobbying to get back in this game? I was lobbying real bad, but I know that we got other receivers who stepped up, too, and I knew they could play, so I let them do it. Do what they do. With everything that your program has been through, you're a senior, first time winning the MAC championship. What does this mean to Akron? I mean, this means the world to the city, all the fans back home, man. Thank y'all. You know, I love y'all, man. Hey, we just, we just won the MAC, man. Thank God. Congratulations. Right, Let's send it back up. This is the best time athletically for Akron. Their soccer program is the first MAC school in any sport to be number one in the country. They are in the quarterfinals nationally, and they will come up and play this weekend. And Akron will come right back here to Detroit in four weeks to play in the Motor City Bowl. Mike, pretty good start for J.D. Brookhart, what he's been able to do in his tenure last, last year, the MAC Coach of the Year, and now this year he wins the MAC Championship. We thank our entire college football Thursday crew. What a wonderful way to end our season. Akron wins the MAC 31-30. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Off we go to SportsCenter. Reverend going to change, and things are going to change around here, you know. This is SportsCenter. A Texas-sized matchup deep in the heart of the Lone Star State. The Mavs and Spurs tangle with first place in the line. Baseball's hot stove heats up in December. We go position by position to reveal which big names are on the move and who's staying put. Plus, why wait until Sunday when you can find out right now?